we're at the time in the bull run where I think it's pretty important to get our hands and grip on an exit plan for our altcoins. And so today I'm going to take you through my exact exit plan. And actually you'll have access to the sheet I am going to be giving you today in the private community completely, of course, for free over there. Now it's important you guys pay attention because of course, this is how we take our paper fake money that's all digitized right now and realize those gains. If you fail to plan, you're going to plan to fail. And trust me, and take it from all the guys I've had one-on-one -on -one calls with, the most common and frequent cause of someone not making any money in a bull run is because they don't have an exit plan. They don't know when to sell. And more importantly, they don't have a goal in mind. When you don't have a ceiling or a goal to know when to sell, you keep raising the bar and raising the bar until eventually, well, you fall off a cliff and hold your tokens for the next four years. Now, there is a very good reason why on this channel, I preach to you all to not have a lot of altcoins in your portfolio. You're going to see why in a second. But when you think about it, 10 minutes per day of research per altcoin tends to blow up if you have more than 15 altcoins. Even 15 altcoins in of itself is over two hours. It's like close to two and a half hours. So can you do that per day? Well, likely most of us are no, unless this is going to be your full-time job. And this chart is exactly why you need to plug all of these numbers in. Now, don't worry. Again, I'm going to make this accessible on a blank sheet for everyone to plug and play in their own way with their own altcoins and their own strategies in the private community. So it'll be cut down significantly for you. But still, if we just go through this sheet, which we will today, you will see why it is very important to track all of this. Now, for those of you inclined to skip this out and not really bother too much about this Excel spreadsheet, or more importantly, the plan I'm going to tell you with your exits uh, today for per altcoin, then that's fine. You can go ahead and skip it. I'm not going to force you to stay here. You're not going to get the next best altcoin in this video. But for those of you who decide to stay, well, I'm going to give you a bit of an applause because this isn't something that would classify as fun. It's important when we look at these sort of things to have, first of all, a goal in mind. Any good exit plan comes from setting a target, setting a goal. Now, the reason why I tell you all why it's important to set an actual real goal, and in this case for me, owning eight properties with each property having 50% down payment, having about $250,000 in cash, buying a 2025 Corvette, reinvesting 250k in crypto hell if i wanted to buy 10,000 nappies i would put 10,000 nappies the reason why it's important we do this is because then we can figure out how much money we have to actually make which means we can figure out from our cost basis aka how much we've invested the multiples required to get to that point in time which means we can set hard cap sell limits what i find time and time again is people do and even people you know i speak to every day you're down the street and friends and family they say well what if it 3x is soon should i look for a 5x what if it's 5x is in the next few months should i look for a 10x and that's where you catch yourself out so having that limit if the old coin or old coins 20x from there that's okay you've achieved your goals simple okay and so with this, the first thing I did with this exit plan was figure out my goals, figure out my grand total of all my goals put together in AUD and then in USD, because I don't know if you guys know this, but most people work off USD. I work off USD when it comes to these figures. So most of this sheet is all in USD. And then work out importantly, how much money I'll have to make if I factor in tax. This is where people get really cut out. Yeah, got to factor in tax. So I've added a 25% flat tax fee on top because I run it through a business, I'm working on a flat uh, tax of 25%. Most of you in the likes of Australia and some of you guys overseas, different tax bracket systems are applied, but ultimately you'll end up paying a lot more tax typically. So factoring in the 25%, what I need to obtain to achieve my goal of just under $5 million to achieve my actual goals is 6.1 million US dollars. So that's a huge difference. If I didn't do that, I'd be literally paying a, like a large sum of this. Again, the difference between these two is roughly about $1.2 million. So there goes most of my dreams of owning those properties. Okay, so all I'm trying to say is it's very important to do this, which is why I will add it to this sheet. Now, I can't take full credit for this design of the sheet because this was all inspired by one of the private community members, Ryan Grubb. He shared this in the exit plan uh, section of one of the uh, levels and he had this beautifully designed excel spreadsheet which again i copied and modeled mine off albeit with some alterations and alterations specifically to help people who adopt this sheet after i'm finished using it for my own portfolio so big shout out to ryan grubb 
for the design of the sheet. So after we've worked out our goals, again, it all stems from this. Yes, I didn't want to buy a Corvette or any sort of car with the money. I think a car can come later, but ultimately... You only live life once, guys. If you can make money, make money and enjoy it. But the reason why cost basis is important because we have to know how much we've invested on today's date to figure out from this point in time how many required multiples we actually need, okay? The reason I've left more in here is because, of course, in the next six months, I might add in a couple more of these to then work out how much I've DCA'd over time to reconfigure the multiples, to reconfigure the whole entire plan. The more money I put in, so long as the money I'm putting in will achieve my goals of, well, in this case, a bare minimum, an 18 and a half X, then I'm going to be able to, of course, just throw in more money, right? But of course, when you throw in more money, you have more cost basis, which means you get closer to the grand total, which means you can lower your multiples. So it all works hand in hand and it's all programmed in. I've also put in the exchange rate here so I can, I know for later on, if I need to, what the exchange rate is at that time again that was all inspired by ryan so then we come down to the really meat and potatoes i would say of the of the plan here so this is the uh the coins obviously and the amount i hold so of course you'll have to go in and do this all yourself this is why i keep track of everything in coin stats so working out the cost basis in essence pretty simple right how much i've invested per coin i mean you go to coin stats and you can kind of like try to work out how much money you've made, you know, minus the total you currently have right now per coin, that can get quite fiddly and inaccurate. So all you gotta do is obviously multiply the amount of tokens you hold by the average buy-in price you currently have. You get the average uh, buy-in price or your cost basis in total, which is where this is stemmed from. And then of course the average sell price I'm looking to obtain. And now this is of course has to be manual. All I've basically done is for most of these coins, I've figured out, again, I've used my, uh, price prediction sheet I have in the private community and also my existing knowledge to work out what I'm likely going to sell at in terms of my goals to achieve my goals now you'll find some of these are a bit hopeful is maybe the word to use in this case like with random for 150 bucks over here likely that will change but again I have this as a temporary structure because when I add more money in I can reduce this sell price because I'll still achieve my goals okay so Again, I will be putting more money into render as time progresses. I will likely end up selling render ideally around 90 bucks or so, which I think will be just over a 10x for me. I want at least a 10x out of render and Celestia. I think Celestia can definitely hit 200 bucks, mind you, but it's render that I'm a little bit concerned about with that higher price. Other than that, I think all of these are very obtainable. Uh, you know, near protocol, Pith, might, this might surprise some of you guys. Hedera 165. I mean, this will all be reduced as I begin to dollar cost average and I put more money into the market, okay? So this is a starting benchmark from where I'm at today. And this all comes down to an estimated ROI, okay? Very simple. And then we get 4.4 uh, million US dollars, which as we can see here, if we factor in the amount required and the very total, including tax, it's over by about $400,000, okay? So we're actually exceeding that. But it's important to exceed that because what comes next is utmost important, okay? Okay. What I'm doing for all of my altcoins is having an initial investment out level. So I'm taking my cost basis. So I'm taking all the money I invest off the table on all of my coins. Okay, so nothing, everything from that point in time is going to be profit. So with HBAR, for example, if I zoom in, my initial investment out level is $1. So I'm taking out all the money I've invested in HBAR at that point in time. And I have about nine other sell levels for HBAR. The max I believe HBAR would probably go to on an average is about two bucks. People are saying, you know, even three or four bucks. We'll see. I mean, I think two bucks is likely the ceiling here. And so I'm going to get out at 165 and have all these sell levels in. But again, importantly, this purple level is the initial investment out level. Well, what this actually means, and I didn't realize this until about a month ago, was the fact that when you take your initial investment out of your projects or your portfolio, you have to recalibrate everything from that point on the new total, on how many tokens you have left over. So you'll see here, I have 500 and 31,000 HBAR tokens remaining if I sell my cost basis at $1, okay? My initial investment. And so this was slightly lower than, of course, the amount I have right now, which is 566,000. So, of course, my new total, which will work out from the rest on this point, is 531,000 tokens, okay? Not the initial starting amount. What that, again, means is it's as if I had a whole new portfolio starting from 531,000 HBAR tokens, after you take the cost basis out. The cost basis never existed, okay? So from this point, we can have a look. We recalibrate everything, okay? We have a new cost basis per coin. So of course, it'll be slightly less than what I actually put in 
per each of these coins. You'll see 33,000 for H by now was 34,000. Let's just go to render. I've invested 16,900 bucks. It's now down to 14,000, of course. And I mean, you can manipulate this, right? You can work out. I mean, if you change the uh, initial investment level of surrender, let's say we change it to 90 bucks, of course, it's going to change everything in this case and allow us to have a uh, higher total. But of course, we're not going to be doing that because I think 70 bucks is a pretty decent initial investment level, maybe even too high. And so, of course, from this point, we can work out how much multiples are required for us to achieve our goal. Again, keep in mind our goal is this point over here, the very, very bottom number on that goal section and then how much we actually obtain if we follow this principle, okay? How much we actually obtain if we were to sell all of our positions, all of our remaining tokens at that new uh, cost basis point, okay? Which comes to 4.4 uh, million US dollars. So as you can see over here, it's slightly higher than what we actually need. So again, just to summarize here, we overestimate if we are going to be taking out our initial investment level because taking our initial investment level out, we have to reconfigure our entire portfolio to reflect a new portfolio because this didn't exist now. If you weren't taking your initial investment out, it works a bit differently because notice down here when we start selling our individual altcoins, we can work off profit. If you don't sell your initial investment, okay, so you don't take your cost basis out, what happens? Well, this is considered a revenue. You still have to take out how much money you put in at the end of the day per altcoin. All right, but this is all profit. This is all house money we're dealing with here. That's why I think taking initial investment is very important. I screwed up the last bull run. I do not want to screw up another bull run. Again, I've given each of my coins a maximum of nine sell levels. Doesn't mean I'm going to sell all of these old coins at nine levels. You can see Pith, Flux, Fetch, Manta, so on. I'm just going to show you the example of HBark. Obviously, this video would be like an hour long if I showed you every single coin. The private community tier three will have access to all of this. Uh, available from my side of things. And so it's very simple. I mean, if you want to go ahead and do this yourself, if you are in the private community, or if you just want to work it out in your own time, it's very simple. So I'm doing nine cell levels for H buy, as you can see over here, represented by these green. Again, this cost basis level never happened. That's extinct. That's just us recalibrating over here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, including the, the actual red line itself, the price we're intending to, to sell at, which is our target price over here. And then of course, we just work out what those sell levels are. So you have to go through yourself and figure out and punch in. I mean, just guesstimate, just throw in some random levels around your exit level and see what works out. Okay. Punch them all into here manually. And then I would just pretty much throw in random percentages to equal hundred percent. So, you know, you might want to throw in uh, 10% here. Oh, okay. We're 5% over. So you might want to take out 15, uh, five minutes off the top, make that 15 to round it up to 100%, whatever, okay? You can work that out yourself to make sure that this is all 100% and just do trial and error. Our weighted average, if we do this, sell at these levels at this percent will equal this weighted average. So you can see we're actually just beneath 1.645, 1.65, we're just beneath the target price. So it's ever so slightly, but as you'll see in a second here, it makes a pretty big effect. So let's pretend that we're happy with this, right? We're okay with losing our target price of $1.65. We're okay with selling at $1.64.5. So again, just less. And as we can see here, it'll calculate the uh, quantity of tokens we do sell based on these numbers at each level. So you can go ahead and plug this in to your own uh, exchange, for example, and then it can work out again how many tokens remaining. So, of course, you want to have zero at the end of this last sell level. If this is not zero, something went wrong, and then your profit. Okay, we'll see here our proposed total for H bar was 876,000, which again was this number up here 876,000, which again was required for us to reach our overall target goal to achieve this up here. And we can see that we actually fell just short of 874,000. So, we're about What's that? Three, two, three thousand dollars less. Okay, so that small little change there by what? That's that's not even half a multiple, really. Um, that's like half of a half of a multiple. It changed by two thousand dollars, right? Which again isn't a massive deal. So I wouldn't really change too much about this in that case. But you can see our weighted average is slightly less than the actual target price, which means that of course it has that effect. And so this is all you need to do, really. You just go ahead and punch your sell levels in, punch your sell prices into your exchange and how much of your portfolio you sell, which again, represented by the quantity sold. So you would just tell the exchange, I want to sell 26,000 H buy at $1.20 and it will work the rest out for you, okay? All done and said in there. But for those of you still confused, I want to show you the example here with Mina Protocol from a fresh 
sheet. It's very simple how to apply this, okay? So whether you wanna go ahead and use this sheet yourself and sign to the private community or whether you're someone who just wants to try to emulate the math on this, well, then here's how it works. So you have your different levels, okay? There's nine cell levels in here. I mean, you can have more. Maybe if I make this sheet available for you all, which I will, of course, I might add a few more levels just for those of you who want to have more. But in any case, you don't have to use all these levels. So we'll show you an example today with five levels, but again, you can use anything you'd like. Now there's two very important numbers we have to find first of all for me in a protocol, okay? We have to find the amount of tokens we are selling after our initial investment, which is those 40,448 tokens, which is represented down here. Okay, the quantity sold must equal that amount of tokens or something's gone wrong. And also the average sell price, which is $18, okay? We also need to figure out what our initial sell level is if we have one, which is important because we aren't going to be selling any lower than $8 if that is our initial risk off the table level. So armed with this information, of course, the first place I would recommend going to is TradingView, pulling up the chart of your project and plotting in the levels. The red line is our target of $18. The purple line is our initial investment level. So of course, I mean, theoretically, we can get rid of it if you want but I would suggest you keep it on there if you're a beginner because that'll allow you to know where the levels really need to fall between. And we can just begin picking random levels. These green numbers here, I mean, we can throw this around here and this here and throw this up here and do whatever we really want to. But again, find the levels that you are comfortable with. There's no formula. There's no right answer for this. There really isn't. So throw them in places you think that make the most amount of sense for you. If it's $1 increments, it's $1 increments. If it's 50 cent increments, that's what you're going to go with. But either way, once you find these levels, and by the way, more doesn't equal better. Sometimes less is better. You can begin plotting in the levels. So let's say we're selling our first first level at $9, then we're going to sell again at $10, then again, let's say 15 and then 18 and then 25, for example, there's our five levels. Well, of course, to keep it simple, what do I always tell you guys? Just throw in a nice even amount amongst levels. So we're going to sell, you know, distribute our portfolio evenly amongst each level. So 20% at each level for these five levels. If you had 10 levels, it'd be 10%, so on, okay? If there was three, 33%, you guys get the idea. And so once this you know, kind of plugs in, we get a benchmark of what we're dealing with here. So our target price of $18, well, as you can see here, we're off. We're only at $15.40. That's our price we're actually selling at. So if we did this, we would be selling actually down here. We'd be well and truly off our target, which is bad because what does that mean? As you can see here, our total sell profit comes to $730,000, not $830,000. So we're $100,000 off our target. Very simple. All you have to do is either one of two things add or decrease the amount of sell level. So maybe you want to add another sell level over here at 30 bucks, for example. Of course, you'll have to sell some at that level. So maybe you want to make this uh, 10% and you want to make this one over here 10% as well to make sure it equals that 100%. And you can see it has moved up the average slightly. Maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you want to keep these five levels, okay? But maybe, let's say we want to get rid of 20% at the bottom and add in an extra... 10% uh, on the top, so 30%. As you can see, we are now very close. We're almost there. We're about you know, $25,000 off. So let's say let's maybe make this 15% and then let's make this 25%. And again, you can begin playing around with it like that. You can see we've got even closer with $5,000 off right now. And you can just begin manipulating that as you will. So this provides you a nice, easy you know, way to work it all out. All you have to do is punch in two numbers over here. And again, there's no right answer. Just play around with it. Throw spaghetti at the wall. And to visualize this, come to trading view and actually plot this in. Now, our exit plan calculator we're actually working out here for the private community is in development still, but you'll be able to visualize this as you go through it with this um, all in one document on our website, okay? So that's coming very soon here, um, which will be available for the private community members. But I just want to let you all know, obviously, make sure this is 100%. So you're selling your entire portfolio and this, the last level you should sell at will be zero because you're not selling any more tokens after you've sold the last lot of your tokens. So then all you have to do is go to an exchange, Binance, Coinbase, whatever, and say, hey, Binance, I want to sell me in a protocol at $9 and I want to sell approximately 4,745 tokens and boom, it'll spit the rest out for you. And then you just go back and forth with Binance or whatever exchange and work the rest out. So, I mean, it takes all of that uh, care for you. But again, this all stems from up here. It all stems from having your goals in check to then work out how many multiples you need. Depending on how many multiples you need, we can come back and figure out how much profit we need. And how much profit we need is, of course, factoring in if we need an initial investment level, which then recalibrates our portfolio. And from there, we can work out the sell levels. If you can't do this, which is the bare minimum, and you know, come in here every so often 
and update your cost basis depending on how much money you've invested, maybe after every single month, you want to recalibrate this. Well, then I'm sorry, you have too many altcoins. If what I just said to you is like, oh my God, that's too much work, you have too many altcoins. If you can't come in here and do these levels and just throw them in there and guesstimate, it's too many altcoins. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have, you can help support all I do over here with a like on the video and subscribing, of course, so you can achieve your crypto goals.